Negative. Okay, there, so far all we've done is charging by contact, or charging by rubbing. So I'll take a stick, a piece of plastic, and I'll rub it with fur, and I'll give it a charge. That's one way you can do it. But another way you can also charge things is called charging by contact. So what that literally is, is that's taking a charged object and bringing it close to something, and actually those charges jump from one to another. I don't know if you can hear this, but when I bring this close to my finger, you can actually hear the spark. Anytime that there's a spark, charges are actually rushing from this charged rod right onto your finger. Same thing when you're walking down and you grab onto a doorknob and you are rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. You're rubbing your feet. So in the carpet, that's charging by rubbing. And then you touch the doorknob. Those charges are leaving you and they're going into the doorknob. That's charging by contact. So what we can do here, I'm going to take this rod and we can charge an electroscope by contact. What we do, I just charge this rod by rubbing it with fur and I'm going to come and instead of just bringing it close to the rod, I'm actually going to have that spark jump. Let's see if I can get just a little bit on it. So I actually rub that. The only problem is we don't want it to touch the side so that I put too much charge on it. So let's see if I can just put a little bit of charge on it. Not enough. Let's see if this guy, this one's a little bit bigger. We'll see if that works better. There we go. So now what I actually did you can see those leaves are clearly repelling each other. I brought my, my uh, negatively charged rod close to my electroscope, and I actually, these electrons on the rod all want to get away from each other. They want to get as far away as possible. So what I actually did is, well, down there on the bottom of the electroscope, that's farther than they were on the rod. So they go from my rod and jump to the electroscope. And then they spread themselves out all across the electroscope. So if we draw a picture of this, we're going to start with a nice and neutral electroscope. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And I had a piece of fur, so that means it's a negative charge. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Got a couple of negatives. So it has a net negative charge. So I'm going to bring my electroscope and actually touch, or my rod and actually touch the electroscope. Well, these negatives all want to get away from each other. So they are going to. The electrons are going to flow across. So let's say this one, that one, let's say five of the electrons float across. Well, they're going to spread themselves across this electroscope trying to get as far away from each other as they can. And now I bring this rod away. So I just touch it for a second and I bring it away. Well, let's see. Down here at the leaves, I have one, two, three four, five, six negatives. And I have one, two, three. And I have enough negatives on there to start with. There we go. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negatives, and one, two, three, four, five, six positives. So I have negatives and negatives. Negatives want to, just like we're always showing, repel. So those leaves will spread apart. So let's see how this goes once more, and we'll explain through it. So here right now, the leaves are just hanging. That means there is no net charge on that electroscope. Those leaves are neutrally charged. They're fine just hanging how they are. They aren't being repelled, they aren't being attracted. So I am going to 
charge this plastic rod. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to touch it. Oh. That was too much. I'm actually rub I'm touching it up against the electroscope. I'm transferring electrons from the electroscope or from my rod to the electroscope. Sometimes this is a fun one to do as well. I don't want to put too much on it. Oh, that's too much. Okay, so as we see, I just charged this by contact. And we have those leaves that are spread apart. Well, this one. Now, I have another uncharged electroscope sitting right next to it. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this is just a piece of wood, it's a normal ruler. I'm going to connect the two electroscopes. So now remember, this one has a negative net charge on it. This one remains neutral. So if I connect these two, nothing happened. Well, wait a minute. The charges on this want to get as far away from each other as they can. This has lots of electrons on it. They all want to rush away. Well. When I touch both of these, they don't rush away. Now the reasoning for that, what is something that's called an insulator? Inside an insulator, electrons or charge cannot flow. So when I connect these, even though the electrons that are on this electroscope really want to get away from each other, the wood doesn't allow them to get away. So an insulator, you can't flow charges. Now, on the other hand, here I have a little device. What it is, it's two metal balls connected by two metal rods and an insulator handle. So what this allows things to do, it allows for charge to flow in one side and out the other, but it can't flow into me. Now, when I bring these close, I have to watch very carefully what happens to these. You can see when I brought it close, this one went down a little bit and that one went up a little bit. What actually happened is I brought this conductor near and the electrons that were on this electroscope, they go, hey, we want to get really far away. So they go, oh, there's something touching us. We can get farther away. So they rush up the electroscope through the rod into this electroscope. So when that happens, both of them become negatively charged.